Hey guys, uh, welcome to the workshop and uh, thanks for joining the contents of today's presentation. Okay, you know, we'll basically talk about why should we simulate IC engines and I've kind of answered that question when when I tried to answer Nirav's question. Then we'll talk about current design challenges and how to look inside an engine, right? Like what are, what, how do we actually look at inside engine and how to figure out how performance improvements can be made. And then we'll talk about computational fluid dynamics what is computational combustion? Because at the end of the day, uh, CFD and computational combustion are currently the state of the art tools that are being used to improve ice engine performance period. So understanding what CFD means, understanding what computational combustion means is very, very important. Especially I see that Nira and uh, Darshil are interested in doing their masters, right? So you guys need to be quite aware of what CFD is and what computational combustion is. And this actually is very useful because even though you're studying CFD with respect to IC engines, no one is going to categorize you as an IC engine guy. They're going to categorize you as a CFD guy. And CFD is always going to be there as long as, as long there is flow problems involved, correct? And the techniques that you learn to solve flow through an IC engine is basically the same techniques that helps you simulate flow through a HVAC system, for example, or simulate flow through a gas turbine or through a combustor, right? So learning CFD and learning IC engines are completely two different things, okay? Then, so then we'll talk about some challenges in setting up IC engine simulation. So this is where we get quite deep into IC engine simulation and setup. And what I would do is, uh, you know, at this point, depending upon, you know, what you guys need, right? I can kind of condense the level or expand on technical points, you know, as you tell me, okay? And this is where I need your input. So why is IC engines required? Well. Partly because you know IC engines produce emissions and they are not that efficient, right? So, why IC engine simulations are required then? Why why is that a solution? Well, IC engines are a device that have been uh, that have been existing for a while, correct? Let me just get my microphone closer so that you guys can hear me. Like I said, IC engines are a device that have been existing for a while. So since it's been a while, you know there are a lot of engineers like you who have tried to optimize this system before and they have succeeded. Previously, this type of a success could be attributed to very simple calculations. A very simple example is, you know, the thermal efficiency of an engine is uh, proportional to the compression ratio, right? So I'm pretty sure you guys have all studied auto cycle where there's a formula called one minus one by R power gamma minus one. You don't have to know this formula, but basically the idea is when your compression ratio increases, your thermal efficiency increases, correct? And in fact, the variable compression ratio technique is completely based on that simple formula. And I'm pretty sure you guys know that there is a new technology, which is called as variable compression ratio, right? Though the concept is very, very easy, it, which can be derived on a piece of paper, it's been implemented only right now. Similarly, there are a lot of other technologies which have been implemented or still are, are being implemented in the process of being implemented. So the idea is these type of analytical work can take us far, but it cannot take us really, really far. At some point you need a better vision, right? You need to see inside an engine. And for that, there is experimental techniques. There are experimental techniques, but as I will show you, there are some bottlenecks to it. So that is why IC engine simulations are very much required because that is basically giving, giving, giving you the extra set of eyes that you need to take a look at what is happening inside the combustion chamber. Because remember, only when you understand what is happening inside something, you can try to figure out what the problem is. If you don't know what's going on, then there's no way for you to identify the problem, which means there is no way for you to find a fix for the problem. I hope that makes sense.